Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I'm back once again with the sweet Millennium Falcon by James Tampa. Friends, I'm going to show you some tricks that let you work with super complex things a little more efficiently. So let's get cracking. All right, friends. So if you haven't seen the original video about this, James Tampa created this awesome Millennium Falcon. I've got a whole designer shout out that you can check out. While I've been playing with it though, friends, I've been trying to get it so it'll render and you can see that it sticks at certain spots. Well, I've also created a movie that you can check up above that talks about how you can group things and use parts to be more efficient. So right here, what I'm gonna show you is that these two pieces are grouped and if I ungroup them, and obviously I've ungrouped a ton of other stuff, then this actually finally renders all the way through. And that's what it looks like when it's rendered at this point. Now, unfortunately, I was ungrouping willy-nilly, and I can't put it back the way it was, but it's great, though, because James gave me a copy, and I didn't wreck his. Now, because I got this far, I sent James another note saying, hey, can you send me another copy so I can play with it? And this one, I've gotten to a better spot where it actually still looks like the Millennium Falcon, and he gave me one that has the landing gear. So let me show you the techniques that I was using to get this to show up the way it's supposed to. So first, I'm gonna ungroup this last piece because I was putting in this part right here. Notice it does take a long time for these parts to group and ungroup. That's because of how complex this design is. I'm gonna hit ungroup one more time so that these two pieces are both separate all right, friends, real quickly, when I click on this shape, see how it still grabs everything? That means this complex shape is still grouped. So I'm going to ungroup that and see if that, even bingo, that is what was locking this up. So that just shows you one more way you can look at these as you're building them. So friends, here's what I did to make this so it could load again. I took every part that I could click on, like this part was still separate, and notice now it is called com. Well, what I did was I went down to shapes collection and I created a shape from the com. So right now I'm just gonna delete that so the design is a little simpler. I came down here and I could select a front gear. So you can see I made that shape. I can delete, I can delete, and I can delete because there were three front gears in the project back gear you can see I saved that as well delete and delete so I was just making this design as simple as I could this trapezoid was a piece I created and it was based on this one I called top and this one I called bottom see how complex those were and now those parts aren't part of the design so it could render further and then there were also these caps that I had as well and I could make those separate. So it just got the design to where I could start playing with it. And since these are all shapes, now it takes a moment for them to come in. But once you click and bring them in, I could put them where they're supposed to be. And it's a simpler design for Tinkercad to work with. This is a fantastic way to build smarter when you're making something unbelievably complex. Now these parts right here that James has, right now there are two separate ones. Let's try something really quick. They look like mirror copies. So I'm gonna do Control D, which that one's pretty complex. And I'm gonna just move it to the other side. And let's see if we flip it this way. Oh my gosh, fits perfect. So we're gonna make this design even more simple by clicking on this one, choose create a shape, and we'll call this one front. And I'm gonna put Millennium, and I always tagged these Star Wars. I never locked the part size and I'm gonna save the shape. So now on the design, because these did turn out the way we want them, I'm gonna simply hit delete and I'm gonna hit delete. And then if you wait over here, we will get that cool part and then we'll be able to bring these simpler parts in and make our design even a little more easy for Tinkercad to work with. Now, right now I'm waiting for that part to show up. And it does take some time, but this also gives you a chance to look underneath and see just how amazing the whole Millennium Falcon was. There are so many details that we could not see in my earlier video because it was still locked and it wasn't to the point where it could render. Also, this is 
the original cutout that was in this location, but for some reason Tinkercad could not handle it and that was why it was freezing. I created this one with my five handle remix. That video will be available in the cards above. This did not work as well as I wanted. It slowed the system down. So that's why I created this one over here that was just a trapezoid and it turned out just as good. Now friends, I'm not a master of Star Wars so when I put this back together, it's not gonna be as awesome as when James created it because he has so much more knowledge of the Millennium Falcon than I do. I'm gonna take this part right now though and let's do control D and then I wanna put it over on this side over here. So I'm just gonna do shift select align and I want it to go all the way to this side. Now it's in the exact right spot but I do wanna flip it. So once again, boom. Now I've got those aligned so that they're ready to cut out when my part arrives. All right, friends, after about three or four minutes, it did arrive. Uh, I'm going to use control up arrow to nudge this into place. Um, it comes in close to that spot right here. This is another one of those spots where James, the creator, would be able to put it exactly where it's supposed to be. Since I'm not an expert, I'm just coming close so you can see the technique. Now I can take that shape and duplicate it. I'm going to nudge it to the other side. And then once again, friends, all we're going to do is bust out that flip and get it as close as I can get it to exactly where it's supposed to be. And I think it lined up just about with that edge right there. So friends, when you're building these, if you can keep the parts separate, it makes it so much more efficient for Tinkercad. So I'm not gonna group those. I know they're where they're supposed to be. I'm just gonna leave them. If you don't want them to move anymore, you can lock them. This makes them so that they can't be grouped and it makes it so that you can be sure that they will stay where they are. All right, friends, it's time to group this middle. Let's make sure we've got the middle section. Notice I'm grabbing all of this and then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna hold down shift and I've got five pieces selected. These middle pieces are separate, so if you don't grab it right, it doesn't cut off the top. Right now though, when I hit group, it will cut out those areas there and boom, we will have the place where we can put those other assemblies that I call top, bottom and the caps. And there you can see after several minutes it rendered and now we can bring in all those pieces. Real quickly, I'm gonna bring in the bottom. You can see that goes right there. Let's lift it up. Let's find the top. It goes right above it. Let's bring that in and we'll raise it up. I'm gonna take those two shapes and I'm gonna align them. Click align and I want them to go to that edge right there. And now I'm just gonna use the arrow keys to get it to the spot I think is right. I'm gonna put the work plane on this piece right here and let's bring out the cap. Notice it is aimed the wrong way. I'm gonna put the work plane back on the ground. That lets me see this rotation handle and boom, let's do work plane and drop it into place. Once again, control D, work plane on the other side and we'll drop it into place. And then don't forget, we've got that awesome flip tool to get it lined up. I'm gonna click on all those pieces, shift click, shift click, shift click, orbit and shift click. And now that I've got them all grabbed, I can hit a line and say center. And now I can adjust them so they're exactly where I want. That one's pretty cool. I think that's about right. This one's pretty cool. And friends, once again, if this was James, he'd get them exactly right. I think this part might actually be rotated 90 degrees the wrong way because I'm betting you that line is supposed to go that way. But these are details I just don't know because it wasn't my original creation. It just makes sense, and I do think that looks pretty close to how it's supposed to look. Uh, real quickly, let me show you how easy it is to add the gear back. If I put the work plane back down here, I can find where the gear went. And this would be where a front gear goes. Boom. Notice it's the wrong way, so I'm going to flip it. And there is the landing gear right where it's supposed to be. There's another piece of gear over here, so let's click on that and do Control D. And let's hit super speed and do that same technique to put all these other parts exactly where they belong. Friends, let's quickly bring in the comms equipment. Once again, my favorite part is that work plane, comms, boom. I have to orient it the right way, but just like that, we can take our little assemblies and make our design more epic. 
put the work plane to the ground. Once again, friends, huge shout out to James for being the creator of this and taking time to share it with me so that we can dive in and see just how little bit by little bit you can make the most amazing designs using Tinkercad. Friends, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or a suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button, and last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.